hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff. Hey, I am LNA, and if you're new here, this is a channel for music production and learning it in a very chill and nice and fun environment. So subscribe if you want to be here more. <laughs> I understand it can be very overwhelming to buy a microphone, especially if you're on a budget. I'm going to make it easy for you. First, by explaining some key terms about microphones. Then I'll go through four main microphone types. What are they good for? And showing audio examples with the Shure KSM microphone series. I have four of them here. <laughs> And I will guide you through prices and what you should really spend your money on. So let's get into it now. Microphone terms. So let's start with that. Basically what microphones do is that they convert our sound energy into electric current. Right, with diaphragms, coils, and magnets. So those things exist inside of the microphone and you will hear us talking about these terms and words a lot with the different microphones. Polar patterns are very important. They are the directions of the microphone. Will it record all around the microphone example or example only a section in front of the microphone? That is the polar direction of the microphone. Also, there's a thing called phantom power, usually needed by condenser microphones, usually marked as 48V in an example interface. So certain type of microphones need this to work. Cool. So let's get started with the different types of microphones. Dynamic microphones are the first ones. And the most common dynamic microphone that you might be familiar with is Shure SM58. So it looks much like what you would think about microphone in the first place. Here what I have is a KSM8 from Shure, which is a modern and very impressive dynamic microphone. And it's very pretty. So why to use a dynamic microphone? Dynamic microphones are generally very tough and robust, much more hard to break than maybe other type of microphones. That's why they are good for live performances, moving about and rough recording sessions. Maybe a rapper or vocalist does a better performance in a studio when they can move around and hold the mic in the hand and just kind of vibe it around instead of just stand in front of a microphone like Ba, 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 ba. You know what I mean? They are not super sensitive, so it's good for loud sounds and holding the microphone example on hand like this. Also, they are very directional. It captures, example, vocals directly in front of you here. Other sounds are not gonna lead into the recording. That's also a dynamic microphone here, and they are commonly also used in filming, movies, and they can also be a bit more cheaper end of the microphone types. So you can't really go wrong with the good microphone like KSM-8, you know, it just works for everything. Hey, 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 hey. Next one. Big, big, big thing here. Ooh, yeah. So the next one we have is condenser microphone, AKA large diaphragm microphone. Pretty. These are super sensitive microphones. Their large diaphragm inside of here is there to maximize the range of frequencies it can handle. So it can handle a lot more example than dynamic microphone. Here I have KSM44 condenser microphone from Shure. 
<laughs> so when to use? Definitely good for studio because they are a bit more delicate and can handle a little bit easier example than dynamic microphones. You can usually see them attached to a stand with a shock mount and they have these wires between them so it takes the shock away so that there's nothing to interfere the signal that is coming in. The key with these microphones is to get the most clean and low noise full sounds as possible and capturing every single hidden nuance of the sound. They are amazing for anything you wish to capture like in perfection, like vocals or acoustic guitars, pianos, drums or overheads of drums, amps, even the room sound. Often Condenser microphones give options for polar patterns to maximize the potential of the microphone and how it can capture the moment. So there's a circle, which is omni. Then there's this like a heart, <laughs> looks like a butt as so sometimes as well. That is cardioid. And then there's a figure eight. So basically omni means that it records around the whole microphone. So 360 around the microphone where uh, the heart, so cardioid pattern is like a heart shape, almost like in front of the microphone. So just the in front of the microphone and figure eight is the front and the back. Can you see there's two sides of it? So the front and the back of the microphone will be recorded. These are the directions. All right. Do, do, do. Sormet värin, sormi elmassa. Iho on kaunis, mutta liian karkea. Sanat hakkaa äänessä somassa. Lahjoittaa mulle tappavaa. Arkea. Next one, we have a tiny little pen microphone, condenser microphone number two, but different type of condenser microphone because this one is a small diaphragm condenser microphone or between friends, we call it pen mic. Similar, super sensitive than the condenser microphone we just discussed with the difference of it's having smaller diaphragm. This means it's a little bit less sensitive as a large diaphragm mic, but in a very positive way. Due to its size, it can actually handle harder transients. So like larger volume changes. And also it can handle higher frequencies a bit better. So using these microphones example with very big signals, you will see like less distortion and less coloration. I have here KSM137, which is an awesome, awesome small diaphragm mic. So when to use? Studios are still a delicate microphone, but when you still need recording something more transient stuff in detail. Very good with acoustic guitar recording, very good for that. There's a high transients, higher frequencies, but also you want the kind of detailed and depth sound that maybe dynamic microphone in that situation couldn't give. Or uh, maybe a piano when you want key sounds of the piano, the hammer sounds. Or when you want a hi-hat sound, very detailed, or any of the drum sounds, you know, stuff like this really. If you have two of these, you can do plenty of awesome stereo recording techniques to imitate more like closely realistic stereo dimensions that we hear in the actual world. So more replicating a human hearing.
this one I need to be very sensitive with. I love these bags. Next one we have ribbon microphone. It is a type of dynamic microphone, the one that we talked at first. Instead of a moving coil inside of it, you have a strip of thin metal doing the audio magic basically. Usually it has dual voice, meaning it can record both front and back of the mic. We have here KSM313 ribbon microphone. And when to use them? They are very highly detailed without being too sensitive, which sometimes the big diaphragm condenser microphone can be. Generally, ribbon microphones are known for its super warm and kind of vintage sound. So amazing for vocals, amped instruments, piano, strings, brass, woodwind, or like literally anything that needs a very honest and detailed sound but still that kind of warmth and, you know, not being too detailed. You get me what I mean. Walk away now and see Let's talk about the prices and what you should really spend your money in. Firstly, you should always buy what you have a budget for. You not having the most expensive microphone doesn't mean that you can't make amazing music. But kind of remember a good microphone, which is maybe a bit more expensive, is for life, where maybe a cheaper microphone might not survive many, many years of active use. Some things that more expensive microphones can promise you is less noise, more sensitive sound and color, and less distortion, and honestly, a more reliable friend. From personal experience, when I started making music, I didn't really hear the difference. I also didn't have money to buy anything extra. With time and also active listening skills, I have started to really realize the differences. And that's where microphones become more of an investment. I know this is my career. I know that I'm gonna do this for a longer time. That's why I wanna actually invest into more expensive microphones. So don't be hard on yourself if you are a beginner and you're still looking if you wanna kinda go to the cheaper end, that's absolutely fine. To summarize what kind of microphone you should buy, if you move a lot and need a reliable and easy microphone to work with, go and buy yourself a dynamic microphone like KSM8. These are also cheaper options. If you are on a budget, especially as a beginner, something like that could be a really good one because it does the vocals, it does the guitar, it, you can move around, you can perform. KSM8, perfect. But then example, if you have a home studio and you need very detailed recording, let's say you are an instrumentalist or you're a vocalist, then maybe a large diaphragm condenser microphone would be more for you, like KSM44. The cheaper end ones, they are maybe not as detailed or they don't have directional patterns. They also vary a lot in price, so just go for what you can afford. But remember, microphones are an investment, and if you want something really good to last for years, then spending a little bit more money might be worth it. If you record a lot of high transient instruments like acoustic guitars, drums, then maybe go for small diaphragm microphones and especially consider having two of them and practicing stereo microphone techniques. If you then like warm sounds and recording a lot of amps, especially if you record a lot of strings, especially good for that, or acoustic instruments, go for a ribbon microphone like KSM313. I love ribbon microphones, they just sound so amazing. If you want to continue enhancing your studio knowledge and music production knowledge, check out the playlist below and here as I have plenty of similar videos like this a lot, honestly. Thank you so much for sure for sponsoring this video and collaborating with me because these microphones are freaking awesome. I honestly think that. <laughs>
Remember to check out my Patreon as well uh, for more content because I do weekly live streams and monthly deep dive for different topics and you can learn a lot from there but you also find amazing community of like-minded people who are very kind and it's such a nice place to get feedback but also communicate with me and other people. These are my amazing Patreon members. Go to the link down below to join us and remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon and come again because you are awesome. Bye.